Hello, hello! Welcome to the Moana Adams Podcast. I'm your host, Moana, a 15-year-old with a ton to say about mental health, wellness, self-love, and a whole lot more. So let's get into it. Whew! It is hot in here, and I am sweating already, but hello, hello! Welcome to another episode where we are talking about living minimally and spring cleaning and getting rid of clutter and all that jazz. Um, I know it's not the most exciting thing that we can be talking about, but it's something that's important to me and I feel like has like really, really like affected me a lot, especially in the last few years. So that's what we're talking about. Suck it up. And it's going to be fun, I promise, because I'm in a good mood right now. I'm like very hyped up today and... I have, like, details about, like, RV life about this, too, so it'll be interesting, I promise. But first, what am I grateful for? I am grateful for Spencer Barbosa's brand, Something Bigger, and their SB Club. I applied a few weeks ago, and they accepted me, and they're the first brand to send me something as a creator, which is really exciting and a big step, and I get to create content, and you know, use the hoodie that they sent me, and hopefully it'll go somewhere, but, you know, I'm hoping that it'll help with growth, and it will help push my content to my target audience, which Spencer Barbosa's audience is my target audience, honestly. You know, her message is one that I really value and appreciate, and so getting the opportunity to connect with that audience is really exciting, and I'm hoping to see growth from it. Um, I got the Talk to Yourself Like Someone You Love hoodie um, in white, and I love it, and I'm terrified to get it dirty, but but I love it, and it goes great with my red Converse. Um, So yeah, I'm very grateful for them, and that they sent it to me, and that this is the start of, you know, connecting with brands and bigger audiences and all that jazz. Um... I also got recently early access to Shopify's new program, Collabs, so that's really exciting, and yeah, I'm just grateful for, you know, them sending it to me and, you know, giving me the chance to create content and all that jazz. So, I am currently loving Goodreads. I talked about an episode or two ago about getting out of my reading slump finally, and Goodreads is an app, um the best thing ever if you're a reader and you don't use it you're crazy download it right now it's free create an account you can search literally any book ever published um title by title author or isbn is it isbn i think that's what it's called yeah and find whatever book you want you can put it in a want to read so your tbr or you've already read it or you're currently reading and when you're currently reading a book it'll pop up on the top part of your my books tab on the app And you can type in what page you're on, and it'll tell you how far in percentage you are in the book, which is the best thing on the planet. Because I'm like, okay, I'll read like 10% today and 20% tomorrow or whatever. Or I'm like, oh, I only have 15% left. I'm going to finish it right now. Um, Kind of an excuse to stay up and read. But best thing ever. And you can also connect with your friends on it, which is really nice. And share TBRs. And I love it, and it's the best thing ever. And if you read and you're not using it, go download it right now. I'm putting it in the link because I promise you it's worth it. I will say the look of the app is kind of outdated, but it works, and so I love it. Now, let's talk about this. So I have a lot of experience in this area of, like, getting rid of stuff, and so... I feel like I have a lot to say on this, but also, like, I feel like there's not a ton that you can say about cleaning, getting rid of stuff. So I'm going to make this as fun as possible. When I was little, um, I was a little hoarder. When I was in, like, pre-K, kindergarten, my bedroom wall was covered in every single art project I would do. It literally looked like a shrine. I mean, it was honestly, now that I'm, like, looking back, kind of terrifying. And my room was always a disaster, packed full of clutter, and... It was bad. It was really bad. And I feel like most kids, you know, their room isn't going to be the cleanest. But 
I've now transitioned to having one of the most minimal lifestyles of anyone I know. And it took a lot. So we're going to talk about it. Like I said, my room was always a disaster when I was little. I hoarded everything. Everything. I would make them an excuse to keep it. I could use it for an art project. I needed it for memories, whatever it was. And I developed a very strong emotional attachment to physical things. And then as I got older, like late elementary school, early middle school, I was allowed to go on the internet and unsupervised and was on a lot of mom vlogs, which is not the worst thing that a kid could do on the internet unsupervised. But I was on a lot of mom blogs, and it's kind of funny thinking about that now, but I was, and I was very into it, and then um, I got on YouTube, and I discovered tiny living and zero waste lifestyles, which really piqued my interest, and I still love that. Obviously, I lived tiny for a year, and zero waste is something that I am not at a point where I, I, I can do, honestly, and nobody can do it perfectly, but I am trying and I shift my most a lot of my bathroom stuff is eco-conscious from zero waste brands and I love it a ton of my bathroom stuff is made of bamboo and it is the best thing ever and I started learning about living with less and putting experiences over physical things and then I got to like eighth grade post-covid and my parents were like surprise we're getting rid of everything and moving into an RV for a year and I was like let's do it because I've been wanting to do this for like four years since I discovered van life and now we're finally doing it as a family in a basically a giant van and I was stoked and then we had to start actually getting rid of things it was hard to say the least Um, like I said, I had developed a very strong emotional attachment to physical things, um, literally everything, and it was not easy. Um, it was probably easier than it would have been because I had the motivation of traveling, and, you know, that definitely was like, this is the reason we're doing it, so it definitely pushed. But we all kind of procrastinated on getting rid of things for months. And we left the rig with it way too full. Um, Like, it was packed at the beginning of the year. I mean, it was crazy how much stuff was in there. And so, you know, we kept getting rid of things after we had left. And it was just, it was hard. It was difficult. It was very difficult. Um, Even with the motivation of travel. Because you know, physical things for me had such, like, a meaning, like, maybe I need it in the future, or, you know, what it had meant to me in the past, or what it had been a part of, you know, I needed that thing, I needed to keep it, and I kind of had, like, the storage unit of my mom's house a little bit, which I didn't keep very many things there while we were gone at all, but I didn't go through the stuff that was there before we left, which was a huge mistake, because now I'm back, and I've got way too much crap over there, And, you know, my room is nice and clean at my dad's house and at mom's house. It's, like, it's so clean. And then my mom's house is, like, still too much stuff. But I'm kind of falling back into this, like, well, I don't really want to get rid of it quite yet. And so it's definitely not easy. But I have a process for it. And we're going to talk about it. And I hope that this helps. And I hope that you listen to this and you're, like, feeling good, feeling motivated, and you're going to go, Go through your closet and all your bookshelves and get rid of crap that you don't need because trust me, it is one of the best things in the world. It feels so like freeing and it's also like a great way to like de-stress because you're like getting rid of all this crap you don't need and it's so rewarding at the end. But let's just break down this whole thing. First of all, I hate saying this, but take a step back and know your why. I know everyone says it. I know. But why are you getting rid of the stuff? For me, it was because we were living, we were moving into the RV and traveling. But is it because you want to declutter? You want to, you know, open space, open mind. You want to put experiences over physical things. Um, And if you don't have one, you know, like I said, those are just a few ideas. But if you don't have a why, take my word for it and understand 
that seriously, it feels so good to have less. Trust me on this. I promise. I went from hoarding everything that I touched to literally having in my room right now at my dad's house, I have a bed with two drawers. One of them is my socks and underwear. Another is my recording equipment. And my closet just has clothes and shoes, not very many of them. Half of them fit in a small carry-on suitcase. So, you know, all of them can fit in one large suitcase. And then I have a mirror, a stack of books, um, and two little footstools that are from the rig that were supposed to be for storage, but all it has in them is one of them has my, um, my rock climbing stuff, and the other one has two purses. That's all that's in there. That's all that's in my room. And my other stuff that I own is in the small drawers of the Ikea desk in the office, um, like my school stuff and my, uh, like pens and stuff like that. That's pretty much it. My mom's house definitely needs to still be gone through some more, but there's not much there either. My closet is pretty packed right now, but it's mostly bulky stuff. And then, I mean, it's a very tiny closet. Both of my closets are the single door closet. And my whole dresser there is empty. And there's like a little footstool thing and a little box with stuff in it. And that's pretty much it. So, needless to say, trust me when I say that it's worth it. Because it took a long time, and I would never go back to having that much crap. So once you know why, what's your reason, break it down so it's easier. Look at what you have and make a list of categories. Um, Books, clothes, bathroom, art supplies, sports stuff that kind of thing. And you might have to break some of those into subcategories. I'm not saying list every single thing you have under those, just list the categories. And for clothes, I'm going to talk a little bit more clothes specific stuff in a second, but you might have to put in the subcategories like tops, bottoms, accessories, what have you. And then determine how much you have or how much you can handle over a course of time. So some people are going to be like, We're going to get this all done in one day. Get rid of it all right now, today, this weekend, Saturday. We're getting rid of all of it. And if that's you, pick a date and set times for different categories. So if you're going to do it this coming Saturday, what time are you going to wake up? And when you wake up, do your morning stuff, whatever. And what's the first thing you're going to do? You know, do your clothes first? Are you going to do your bathroom stuff first? And start with something that's going to be quicker. Start with the faster things first. Because if you're anything like me, checking those boxes off is definitely going to get you excited to do the rest of it. But if you're the other side of the spectrum and you want to separate it out into weeks or even months of work, pick a time and a day on the calendar when you're going to do each category. If you're like, okay, um, if I'm going to, if you're going to spend 30 minutes doing it each day, decide what categories you're going to start with and what days you're going to do it. And, or you could decide, all right, Mondays, I'm always going to do it on Mondays and I'm going to spend two hours doing it every Monday night and break down. All right. The first Monday we're going through clothes. Second Monday, bathroom stuff. Third Monday, art supplies, right? So, make sure you know when you're doing it, set a time in your calendar, and know that it's actually happening. Now for the actual hard part, and it's figuring out what to keep and what to toss. So, there are two ways that I like to do it. Really just depends on how I'm feeling. One, and it also kind of depends on what it is. So, we're going to use books as an example for this. You could go through everything super quick. And when I say super quick, I mean don't spend more than 30 seconds or 10 seconds or 15 seconds each book. Have a stack and it's a quick yes, no, maybe. I mean sort through those puppies fast. Like if you have 10 books, it should take you one minute or two minutes to go through all of those and determine yes, no, maybe. 
So once you go through the stacks and you have yes, no, and maybe piles in front of you, the yeses, go ahead and put them away. The noes, put them in a box. And the maybes, you're going to go through and see quicker. You're going to, not quicker but than before, but I mean like you're going to do it fast, but not as fast as you had before. And determine yes or no. No more maybes. Yes or no. And only keep it if it's 100% yes. So if it's not, you don't need it. And if you end up needing that book later on, you can get it at the library or online or find another copy. And if it's not books that we're talking about, I'm sure you can get it somewhere else. And if you can't, and you really need to keep it, but if you don't, get rid of it. Trust me. Or you can go the second way and take it slow. Determine what qualities an item has to have in order to keep it. If it's a book, maybe it has to be in good condition, and if you've already read it, then you don't need it anymore, or, you know, you actually think you're going to read it, so you keep it. And pick those qualities specific. If you don't write them down, at least understand in your head the specific qualities that make it a keeper. And if it doesn't match those qualities, it's out. So... Once you go through everything, what do you do with it? Pretty self-explanatory, but for those of you who are slower, you can either sell it, and if it can be sold, sell it. Do not toss money in the trash. Please. It seems like a lot of work. My dad would say the opposite. He would be like, don't waste your time. But especially if you're young, if you're getting rid of stuff, and you have the option to because it's worth selling, sell it. Trust me. If it's clothes, make a free account on Poshmark or Depop. Google it. I can't remember which one, but one of them has um, better margins. And sell it. If you have Facebook, use Facebook Marketplace. And don't sell it for too much, right? You want it to sell. But still, you can make a couple bucks off of it. And if it's no good... And it's, if it's in good condition, but you, it's not worth selling, donate it, goodwill, charity, whatever. Toss the rest, and trust me, you'll feel so much better afterward, because it feels so accomplishing. Now, like I said, I want to talk about clothes specific, because I feel like this is a category that's more difficult, and also something that you have to do, that people do more often, I feel like. One thing that I regret, one of my biggest regrets about getting rid of stuff is getting rid of too many of my clothes. I got rid of too much. There are literally to this day, it's been over a year since I've tossed half of my, like most of my things away. There are certain specific pieces of clothing that I remember on a weekly basis that I'm like, did I really, did I really get rid of that? Like, what was I thinking? I wish I could wear that today. Or I'll see in a picture. I'm like, I cannot believe I got rid of that. Are you kidding me? So, don't get rid of too many of them. Don't be too strict on it because that's what I did and it was a mistake. I have like zero clothes now. That's an exaggeration. But I definitely get frustrated with my clothes because I don't have enough to build that many outfits. And now I'm like a ridiculous outfit repeater. So, that's definitely something I regret. If you're thinking about doing a capsule wardrobe, which was my original idea, do not just get rid of everything to get new stuff. Trust me, that is not the way to go. I will put in the episode notes a link to a creator that I really love. I can't think of her name right now. I feel like it's Christina, maybe, um, or Christine, something like that. And she talks a lot about capsule wardrobe and getting rid of things and, you know, that kind of, that niche is what that niche is what she's in and so I will definitely link that below I highly suggest looking into some of that stuff if you're interested in capsule wardrobe but do not keep stuff that you know you're not going to wear you don't want something one method that I really like is hanging everything up in your closet and putting all the hangers backwards and when you wear something and you go to put it away you put it correctly or something of that nature for the clothes that you don't hang up and at the end of three months six months what have you you will 
get rid of those things that you didn't wear. Um, another thing that I like to do and that I think I would definitely go back and do again, especially if we weren't moving into the rig, if we were staying at home, it would be easier to do this, but do the yes, no, maybe. And if it's a maybe and you go through the maybe pile again and you're still not sure, put it in a box, not a giant box. Don't keep a ton of them and put it somewhere that you can get to fairly easily, but it's not like cluttering up the space. And if you think of something in that box and you're like "Ooh, I should wear that or I want to wear that or this might work with this take it out wear it and if you feel good in it you feel like you might actually wear it with you know more than just this one time keep it but after you know six months three months whatever get rid of it and the reason I say you know a good couple of months is because you know there might be pieces that you don't wear because it's too hot or too cold or the weather depends on that so make sure you keep that in mind when you're getting rid of clothes just because you haven't worn it in the last two months doesn't mean you won't in a few months when it warms up or cools down that's really all i have for you um but i will say this getting rid of stuff and living more minimally is the best thing ever trust me on this one It feels so freeing to have less and it opens up like the space. Every single thing that you see, I mean, it adds to your brain and it's so nice to have less. And it's a great way to relieve stress. You'll feel super accomplished when you're done. And if you get rid of this stuff, it'll make your decisions easier. When it comes to clothes, getting ready in the morning, easier decision. If you have a crap ton of makeup and you can never pick what to wear, you can never pick, you know, which lipstick you want to wear, easier decision. If you can never decide what book to read next, easier decision because you have less options. So trust me on this, clear up your space and take the time to do it and it will feel so much better afterward. Also, don't forget to do the small little things, you know, wiping down the baseboards and sweeping and you know the places that you wouldn't normally do and when you're cleaning out drawers to go through the drawers wipe them down and give them a good scrub um because it'll keep the stuff you know healthier what have you I can't I mean I guess you don't really keep books healthier but it'll keep things cleaner and less dust and help clear up space in your head so trust me on this one go try it Even if you just start with one category, just starting with one bathroom drawer is, you know, a really good step. My bathroom stuff is still something I'm struggling with a little bit. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what skin stuff works for me. So I have, like, extra samples that I still need to go through. But do it often. And don't just do physical things. Do it digitally, too. I always talk about going through follower lists, but go through your photos, which I swear I wish I could pay someone to sort through my photos and delete the ones I don't need and they could just read my mind because it's the most stressful thing in the world for me but go through the digital stuff too clean your desktop clean your email out clean up your notion or your or whatever organizing software you use clean all those things out because it'll feel so much better trust me on this one go do it right now start making category lists look at your space and You know, make it a better space that makes you feel good and you're you're happy to be in and you enjoy. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to give this podcast a rate and review, as well as follow me on all my socials linked in the show notes. Don't forget to drink some water and I'll talk to you later.